You're a mother. You're also a parent advocate who's been fighting hard on the ground in Los Angeles. How did we get here? <laughs> How did we get here? Uh, we, we, we have lost uh, track of many things. Our country feels like it's uh, the wild, wild west. And a lot of the threat is coming from within. But it's the parents today who are saying enough is enough. Many of us did not plan on being such advocates. We're taking our time, our resources. Um, Full-time advocacy, you don't, there's no salary with it. It's because you mess with our kids, you mess with our inherent freedoms, you have our attention. And when you alienate the parents, when you alienate the, the brand that used to be trusted like Disney, and like institutions like Harvard, the parents are not gonna enroll their children. And that's what we're seeing. Don't underestimate the power of the mothers and fathers of this country. Yeah, uh, if anything, um, COVID and then the wokeness really woke up the mama bears and the papa bears, that's for sure. I know you being one of them, but I gotta ask, you know, little kids are inundated with the wokeness of corporate American Hollywood. I mean, just recently, new, the new Coco Melon, which is on Netflix, has a boy in a dress. I mean, this is the most popular show for babies and two-year-old toddlers. Why are these industries so focused on their minds? Like, leave our little kids alone. We'll, we'll deal with it. <laughs> exactly. Can kids just be kids? Can parents have peace of mind that they, if they leave their children in front of the television, that they're not going to be bombarded with some left ideology? And that's the problem today. Nothing is safe. We see it in sports. We see it in entertainment. And we're seeing it in schools. And it's shaping the next generation of leaders. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, in the lead up, right? Look what's happening at college universities, so much so that people are saying no to Harvard. I mean, 2023 has been a very interesting year. We, I, I never thought I would say that. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it keeps getting darker. <laughs> it's very hard to keep standing where the light shines. But, you know, there, we are the silent majority. And this country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. Disney used to embody Judeo-Christian values. There was a time when being a masculine man and an empowered feminine woman was a good thing. And we're missing that. We are so confused. Our children are confused with what, who should have what role and what pronoun. We've lost our way. So tell us about your new book. As I mentioned, it's the number one in the new releases. This is on Amazon in the children's Judeo-Christian values. And when did you come up with the idea? Give us, give us a little information. So it's a really funny story. I am really, really proud of this book. And it's already number one new releases, which means it's resonating with families everywhere. It's, it opens an, an opportunity for families to sit down with their children and talk about the value of free choice, freedom, personal accountability. But the funny story is, Stella, I wrote the beginning of the story eight years ago when I was still a liberal. And I could not figure out the ending. I knew that I wanted a child to be, you know, I, I wanted a child to embody every child and adult today who's frustrated with the world that they are currently living in. They are tired with the fighting and the argument and constant irritation. And I, and I had this boy go on a journey. Uh, and he first visited the, visits the land of me, which embodies pleasure. And then the extreme is hedonism. And, 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 and no checks and balances. And, and then, of course, you'll see how the boy realizes this is certainly not the world for him. So he thinks that he would do way better in the opposite world, the world of the land of we, which is predictable and quiet and calm and all great, the greater good, until it's not. And it took me eight years and a shifted mindset into conservatism where the ending hit me like a lightning bolt. And it's going to it resonate with readers everywhere. In a time of growing darkness, this book really does illuminate where the light still shines. And we need that light so badly, Stella. This is a 40 page simple fable, back to basics, that every age reader will benefit from and enjoy. That is so awesome. I just got the chills as you're explaining. It took you eight years and here you are. Uh, it, yes. it paid off. Um, why is this book so unique and, and, and why now? I, what, what, hit so, you? Like, what was the moment that was like, all right, I think I got it. 
Well, we're in a time where we realize that freedom is not free. The, 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 what this country has been founded on, what Israel has been founded on, has to be stood up for and protected. And I'm like, I need to get this message to children, to young children, so it's ingrained in them so they can face the world with this resilience and appreciation. I think our country in general has become so spoiled on freedom that we, we totally have taken for granted how great we have it here in this country. So I took from my background as a psychotherapist, it's not just a children's book. There is a wonderful afterword in the back, really in depth with why now, why this book is so crucial now. There is workbook, there's discussion questions, there's activities, because what, what good is a good story if it cannot be integrated mm -hmm. into an applica and applicable to your life now. And as a mother, as a psychotherapist, as a passionate pro-American, pro-Israeli citizen, these were the values I wanted for my children. And I know many families can resonate with this. Well, Daniela Bloom, congratulations on your new book. You can find it on thank Amazon, you. obviously, The World where, where I Belong. And of course, thank you for continuing to fight for what's right in our country, in, of course, liberal California, uh, where you stand out. Very amazing with yes. what you're doing there.